Hey, what's up YouTube? Droth here. So today I'm going to talk about how my Glacial Hammer Juggernaut went on day 1 and 2. Uh, I've been asked a lot of questions on if I like the build, and if the build is good, and if I change anything from the POV. So I want to make a video and go over everything people have been asking me. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So things I did differently. Early on in day 1, I ended up using Fortify Gem. This is just until you get the nose on the tree. Whenever you do that, I got them pretty late actually, so I ended up using Fortify for quite a while. Use Cold Pen until I got Trinity. Uh, basically, Trinity is just enabled when you get Heat Shiver. So whenever you get Heat Shiver, you just put Trinity in over Cold Pen. And faster attacks. So I actually use faster attacks over Hyperthermia. Faster attacks is felt better and you get higher trauma stacks, so it might just be better in general anyways. Um, you do have to worry about your damage taken a little more, but faster attacks just seems better. Um, I got an early 6 link. And I ended up using Life Tap for a while because I didn't have minus mana rings, and I I still don't, but I got a Reservation Jewel, and that kind of fixed it as well. So now I'm using Elemental Damage with Attacks. This is kind of what my end game setup is looking like. Uh, for leveling, I actually recommend you level with a two hander still. Two hander is just so much better to get the Frost Breath. Uh, you can get that level fifty, but if you don't have that, just stay two hander basically. I did end up dropping a Bright Beak in Act Five, like which is kind of insane. I tried it out for a while and actually leveled with it, and to be honest, it was actually worse than a two-hander. It's just way too much ramping, especially in the campaign. I would recommend against it. Unless you have a bunch of flat damage already on your gear. For example, if you have like Prism Weave and you have like flat damage rings, then Bright Beak is probably not too bad. Duration is very important. I got a lot of questions about how am I dealing with my trauma stacks, and how are you getting Tanyarahi. Duration kind of enables the Tanyarahi a little bit because you're taking more damage from the Trauma Sacks and this will give you more Adrenaline and Onslaught up time. It's also to make the ramping way less annoying for mapping. Once you have Duration, your Sacks kind of linger at like a higher average number, which is very important for mapping. So the Duration nodes on the tree are very important, I would say. Get these as a priority. Maybe even before like Suppression and stuff. Held of Ice. So while actually playing the game, I was taking too much damage, so I switched to Arctic Armor. And to be honest, the difference for clear isn't even that noticeable. It's a little sad, but I think Hail of Ice is not the play. I think you just use Arctic Armor, or honestly, even Hail of Ash is probably better for damage. So maybe that, or Hail of Purity, if you really want to. Speaking of Hail of Purity, there's actually some tech you can use, which is Hail of Purity, Guardian's Blessing, and your aura. It'll turn Hail of Purity into a 50% aura, basically. But the minions will be enabled to get your 50 percent aura as well. So basically you're getting Herald Purity, but I tested it out a little bit. You kind of have to be in range of your minions and it could be a little bit annoying. But it's some, something to play around with for sure. The next things I'm going for on the character are going to be my cluster setup, which I'll drop the Fortify notes for. And you could actually get the Fortify Tattoo. There's a tattoo that gives you Fortify and Hit. It replaces a notable. Basically, you could replace that for 5 points, that would be worth it as well. Other notable tattoos for this character are Melee Strike Range, which replaces your Shrink Nodes. I think like 5 or 6 of those would be nice, honestly. I'm using like 5 right now. It seems to help to clear quite a bit. The character feels better with it. The other ones are Percent Suppression, that'll help your gearing. Some Percent Cash Res. Cash Res is pretty annoying early mapping, so that'll help a bit with that. Uh, some Global Accuracy could be good. If you need some Accuracy, there's Global Accuracy. And yeah, so far that's what I've gone for with my tattoos. You guys might have noticed I took the Brinksmanship nose on the tree as well. This is for a couple of reasons. The AoE actually affects Glacial Hammer when he has Flash in, which is nice for clear. But more importantly, I took the Expedition node on the tree, which blows everything up at the same time. And this causes monsters to have block a lot of the times. So I took the Attack Mastery, monsters cannot block your attacks. This is the main reason I'm taking it. Without it, it's still probably worth, honestly, because the clear is better. But for single target, if you want to drop some nodes, these are probably the first to go. Uh, and Panopticon. I'm going for Panopticon next. I actually kind of want to take it earlier. I just don't know what to drop. But yeah, the buff Linger and Panopticon are really good. Your tomes are dying on bosses a lot. And the buff Linger is just nice. So I'm actually kind of low level compared to what I would normally be here. And that's because I've been spending a lot of time with the League mechanic. This one seems pretty good at it, but it is melee, so it's, it can be a bit annoying sometimes to deal with the league mechanic. Everything there is tanky though, like really tanky, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because we get 
Perma Rage, and we get really, really high trauma sex. It's actually the perfect spot to have high trauma sex. The bad news is, um, everything's really tanky. Like, the bosses are tankier than, like, Shaper, for example. Like, ridiculously tanky. I'm at, like, rank 300 now, which is level 83 for a while. And it feels very similar to, like, deep delving scaling. I'm not sure exactly how that'll go, like, if it scales past that. But it seems really insane right now. And, yeah. You want to have suppression capped, I think, at some point for that as well. Just because I am actually getting one shot occasionally. Uh, I think it's because I'm not suppression capped. Like, sometimes I'll just get, like, Divine Ard off screen. And that'll kill me. Or, like, one of the Exploder guys will blow up and it'll one shot me. I think that might be fixed by just getting suppression capped. But yeah, basically, I can see why they made it so you can't actually die in the limp mechanic. It seems a little bit overtuned. I'll show you guys some footage of that. And with that in mind, I actually haven't really been doing, like, super endgame content yet. I haven't done any Guardian bosses yet, so I can't really show off any of that. But so far, the character. It's felt really good to play in maps, and I haven't really struggled on single target other than the lead mechanic. Every map boss I've done, which I've done up to like T11, I think, they die pretty fast. Like, they get perma frozen and they die in, a, in like a second or two. So the damage seems fine. I don't really have any complaints so far about that. I'll keep you guys updated though when I do Guardians. I'll show off some of that bossing footage. And that'll probably be in a day or two. I'll try to keep you guys updated on the build and how it's going. And yeah, so far, I think it's not bait, but we'll see how it goes and scales into the end game. I'm very excited to continue to max this character, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.